In this tutorial, we will learn what's meant by coupling in object-oriented design. Take a scenario where you have two classes, class A and class B. Here, class A uses class B. You can see that in class A, there is a member which is an object of class B. The degree of dependency of class A on class B is called as coupling. That is, when you make some changes in class B, how often you have to make the corresponding changes in class A too. In simple terms, coupling is the degree of dependency of one class on another. Now let's understand the difference between loose coupling and tight coupling. In tight coupling, two classes often change together. That is when you make some changes in class B, you may have to make the corresponding changes in class A too. In loose coupling, there is less dependency between the classes. In our sample scenario, class A doesn't know about the implementation details of class B. The only knowledge that class A has about class B is what class B has exposed through its interface. Here is the comparison of tight and loose couplings. You can see that there is more interdependency, coordination and information flow in tight coupling, whereas Loose coupling has got more testability. Now let's write some code to understand these concepts better. Let's take a sample scenario here. Suppose you need to travel to somewhere. You can depend on different types of transportation mechanisms like bus or train. We will implement a class for bus and another class for train. In order to make you travel, let us implement a class for travel as well. Alright, so let us try to implement the tight coupling exercise first. In our story, we have different transportation mechanisms. So let us implement a class for bus. Alright, so let's have one method inside bus bus class so void uh, let's make it as public void start this is to start your trip maybe let us print bus trip started here all right now let's implement the second transportation mechanism that is train it's our train class and inside train class we will implement a method the same method start it's a public void start and here we can have again the same the printer train trip starter all right so we have uh, Two modes of transportation and now let's have one more class travel so this will enable a person to travel again here we can have a method start public void start and so assume that the travel is by bus so let's create an object of bus here. Bus equals new bus. And then how do you start? We can have bus dot start method here. Okay, so this will enable the user to start a trip by bus. Now let's have the person class implemented finally for testing it out. Here you have person class and uh, you can we need to have a main method here so let's have the regular public static void main method string of ox inside this now we need to travel by bus that is the uh, target first so let's have an object of travel class 
so travel well equals new travel okay and then let's start the traveling travel dot start right now let's execute this and see how it works right so let me run this program and then let us check the result so we got the result here bus trip started so that's working now we have three classes here let's go and check the classes i mean apart from the person we have a travel bus and train right now think of the relation between person and travel i need to travel by train so what change i need to make since the person class is completely dependent on travel class so inside this we need to make a change here so instead of these two lines okay let us comment this out if you want travel class to make you uh, travel with train you need to create an object of train okay so let's create train equals new train and then we need to invoke the method train to start so that means these two classes person and travel are tightly coupled right because if you want to make a change here then you have to make uh, the corresponding changes in the person I mean the travel class as well so now if you run it you got the different mode of transportation train trip started okay so this is what is called as tight coupling the classes person and travel are tightly coupled not only that uh, travel and uh, the mode of transportation like bus and train classes are also tightly coupled okay so let us take a scenario like suppose in the train class one change is made okay so let us go to the train class and say now the method name is start here right so instead of start method suppose the implementation of uh, traveling you know so this is instead of start they have go here okay so now what will happen here when you go back to travel class see you need to make a change here as well right so what does that mean the travel in order to use uh, train class the travel class should know how the method start is implemented or how uh, the train class is implemented the implementation details of train class should be known to the travel class okay based on that you need to make changes here so instead of start you need to make go here okay so the classes travel and train are closely that means tightly coupled okay now let's go back to person and now let us try to execute it now it works okay train trip start so this is the meaning of tight coupling so if you make a change in one class then the dependent class also needs to be changed well now let us implement our exercise for loose coupling well so let's start with an interface so in our example we have two mode of transport right so let's have a transport interface all right so we need to decide what is the method for traveling okay to start traveling so we know that it's a uh, we start so this is how we start the trip all right so we have the interface ready now let us implement this interface in bus and train so let's start with bus let's implement the bus class I mean let's implement the interface in the bus class so how do you implement it we use the implements keyword and then it's transport right so we need to implement the methods right it's a start method so here the implementation we can print the same thing bus trip started all right now let's implement the second transportation mode 
which is train. Here we can have train and this should implement transport. Again here you need to have the methods implemented. So you can we can print train trip started. Well, so we implemented both the transportation mode. Now let's have one more interface that is for travel. So how do we name it? Maybe let's name it as I travel for the travel interface. Let me zoom it. Well, here, what is the method here? We know that it was like void. Yeah, start again, start. So we need to have a start method here as well, right? So the person class can invoke the start method to start the trip by using either of the transportation modes, pass or train. But let us implement travel method now. I mean, uh, I travel interface now. So how do we implement it? Let's have a class. Let's say, let's name it as travel. And implements I travel. Okay, now what is next? We need to have the methods implemented inside this, right? Okay, all right. So we need to decide how to start the travel. For that, let us have a member variable here private transport, the transportation mode can be applied here, right? And how do you decide which is the transportation? We need to have either a setter or a constructor. Constructor is a convenient method. So let's have a constructor and using this constructor, we can pass the mode of transportation, okay? So here we pass the transport and based on the transport method selected, we can do the travel. So here we can say transport dot start. So either by bus or train, we can do the traveling. Now let's implement the person class. Let's go to person, okay, person class. And uh, here we need to have the main method public static void main string of ox well now we need to have the transportation mechanism first right so let's have our transport object created first it's a uh, transport then uh, transport one the first way of transportation maybe we can say like new and it's our uh, bus all right so what is the second mode of transportation let's have uh, an object for that as well transport we let's say transport two new three all right now let's have a travel method I mean travel object implemented so let's have uh, the interface I travel then let's name it as travel equals new let's implement it travel okay so we implemented this but you need to pass the mode of transportation maybe let's travel with transportation one transport one which is bus right and then using this now we can start the travel travel dot start all right now let us execute this method and see the result okay so now you can see that bus trip started now we need to make a change to train so what is the change that we need to do the only change that we need to do is instead of transport one we need to make it as transport two which is train transport right so let us run it and see the result. See, train trip started. So now, now you just think of the coupling here. 
so how this person class is dependent how much it is dependent on transport so if you need to make a change here you just need to make change here right there's nothing to be changed in the transport i mean sorry uh, nothing much to be changed in the travel class so the person class should know about the interface i travel okay so because it has got a method here start that is the only thing that the person class should know so how this is implemented in travel class that is not a problem for person class all right so now take the case of travel class travel class is using transport object right so take the relationship of these uh, travel and transport travel should know some information only the uh, declaration information about start method that's all so the travel class should know how these uh, transport interface is defined right it has a start method that's the only information that travel class should know how this interface is implemented there are different implementation like bus and train so that is not a problem travel class should not bother about how this is this interface is implemented by different class